Welcome to the video tutorial for installing Opalis Integration Server version 6.3. For the purpose of this video, we will be installing on Windows Server 2008 R2, although Windows Server 2003 is also supported. To begin the installation, you'll need to find the Opalis installation source. The installation source uh, can be downloaded online, so if you navigate out to the uh, www.microsoft.com forward slash Opalis, uh, that'll take you to the System Center Opalis page, uh, on which you can find the 180-day evaluation version. If you're a full SMSE or SMSD licensed customer, you can uh, also download the Opalis bits, uh, which are not restricted to the 180-day evaluation. Uh, the installation process is identical in either case, and I've already installed the uh, or downloaded the bits. So why don't we begin? So once you've downloaded the installation package, uh, whether that's the 180-day eval or the full version, you'll find that it's a single um, zipped executable. So let's unpack it. And I'm just going to let it unpack into the same directory here, which is C install, and then I'll just give it an OIS folder. Uh, this doesn't have any bearing on any of the installation process that follows, so you can follow whichever folder path you feel most comfortable with. So within the installation uh, unpack, we're going to find three separate zips, the uh, licenses zip, the 622 installation zip, uh, as well as the integration packs, uh, service pack one and others, and then uh, the 6.3 upgrade bits. So I'm just going to take these in order here and uh, unpack the eval licenses. So go ahead and extract those. I'll leave them in the same folder. It's fine. I will uh, get rid of the zip just so that I know where I am. Uh, likewise, I'm going to install, or uh, unpack rather, the 622 installation source. This is the largest piece of the installation in terms of size. And what we'll have here is a folder with a number of other folders in it, as you see there. So to clean this up just a bit, what I'll do is create a new folder for the uh, IPs, and essentially for the pieces I'm not interested in right now, uh, just to uh, clean up a little here. So I'm going to take all the integration packs, the uh, QIK, and the uh, Ops Console installer and move those to the IP folder and make life a little cleaner here. And then uh, what we have is the Service Pack 1 installation. <clears throat> now you may not need the Service Pack 1 installation. Um, I'll just show you what's inside there. Uh, yet another zip, uh, which is to be unpacked. Um, that contains the uh, upgrades to the... Uh, uh, OpenView Operations Integration Pack, the Foundation Objects Upgrade for Service Pack 1 of the uh, Opalis Integration Server uh, Foundational Object uh, Libraries, and um, uh, improvements to the Ops Console Installer. So since we're not covering the Ops Console Installer or uh, the OpenView Integration Pack, I'm actually not going to unzip this because the only other piece that would be in involved in that would be the uh, the foundation objects library, but those are going to be replaced in 6.3 anyway. So um, I will uh, I should rather unpack the uh, 6.2.2 installer though. But if you have a 6.2 installation and you're moving to Service Pack 1, or if you're using the Operations Console, definitely unpack the um, the 6.2 Service Pack 1 and uh, apply those elements uh, as is appropriate according to their documentation. Okay, so those are unpacked. I will get rid of the zips, and so it'll take us back here, get rid of that zip now, and that leaves us with the 6.3, so we'll unzip 6.3, and uh, fortunately 6.3 does not have any zips inside of it, so we're in good shape. Alright, so at this point we've got everything unpacked um, and reasonably well organized, we're going to go ahead and start the um, installation process. So um, when you start the installation process, it's always uh, best to verify that you meet the installation requirements. Um, and the system requirements here are for a um, 2.1 gigahertz dual core Intel Xenon 3000 series or equivalent, um, 2 gigs of RAM, and uh, adequate disk space to run the um, components that you're interested in, management server, ops console, and so on. Um, also, in terms of operating system, you'll want to have Windows Server 2008, 32 or 64-bit, Windows Server 2008 R2, 64-bit, uh, Windows Server 2003 or 2003 R2, uh, also 32-bit. Uh, along with that, make sure that you've uh, enabled .NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1, uh, which I have done in my machine. And the last thing you'll need, of course, is a SQL database to um, 
to have a, as your back end. I've got one locally here, so we should be in good shape for those things. Uh, the very first step then in the installation process will be to install 622. So to do that, um, we're really just going to follow the, uh, the standard installation procedure, uh, except that we're going to stop before we get to number four. So number four would be to install the client, and then following that you'd also deploy the action servers. Um, we're going to stop it uh, before step four and uh, do some patching of files. So uh, to begin with, let's install the management server. So to install a management server, we're going to have to uh, read through our end-user license agreement. And uh, once we're satisfied with the uh, terms, we can accept the license and move on. Um, provide organizational information as appropriate. Um, I'm going to leave it as anyone who runs or uses this computer. I'm also going to leave the destination folder as its default. You see there it's C program files, x86, Opalis software. Uh, similarly, on 2003, uh, C program files, Opalis software. So the last step here is to provide login information to the um, the management service account. Um, you can type that in freely if you like, or you can browse out to it. There's a, a little picker here. So I'm in my domain. Let's see if I can't uh, browse out and find my domain admin. Um, doesn't need to be the domain admin, but I'm going to use it for simplicity's sake. Uh, you can also uh, also make sure that the uh, the account that you're using is a local administrator. That is absolutely a requirement. Okay, so step one is complete. We're now going to configure the data store. So this will be pointing to our SQL installation. So Microsoft SQL. Uh, the server name is Opalis 6.3. I will be using Windows Authentication. Um, you can switch to SQL if you prefer. The, the preferred method would be Windows Authentication. Um, and because this is a clean installation, I'm going to create a new database and I'll leave the default name as Opalis. Um, if you're upgrading, you've got that option in there. But uh, we're doing a clean install here, so we'll stick with that. Um, if you're not using a domain administrator, um, if you're using a local admin, make sure that the local admin has privileges to create the database. Obviously, we're creating a new database here, so they need that right as well. Okay, so the next step will be to import a license. And to do that, um, we just want to make sure that we've got our licenses. So I'm going to go back out to our uh, C install OIS folder that I created and go into the 180-day eval licenses under eval. Um, and if you have the full licenses, there'll be a, a similar path here. And you'll want to go and grab the uh, product licenses document and open it up. So these contain the trial licenses for all the integration packs that are available. Um, we're just interested in the uh, core, at least for the purpose of this video. So I will copy the uh, license key, and that's including the curly brackets on the ends. And I'll just make a note of the file name, which is uh, Opalis Integration Server underscore 180 day eval uh, dot LIC. So that should be down at the bottom here. I'll just quickly verify that. And there it is. Uh, make sure that when you're in, about to install the licenses that the license file, the LIC file, is a local file. Uh, the licensor does not appreciate uh, files on shares and uh, will give you an error. So from here, I'm going to uh, import the uh, key that I have in my buffer, paste that in, and then browse out to my license file. So that should be in my C install OIS. 180-day eval, and we said it was down near the bottom. There it is, 180. Um, and then just simply click OK. And if that goes uh, according to plan, you should see a screen much like you have here saying that the license is successfully imported. Um, I'm going to stop here and uh, not add any additional licenses, but if you're running integration packs, um, you would follow the same procedure there. Uh, grab the appropriate key and uh, import the licenses for each of the integration packs that you're interested in. We have completed steps one through three, and uh, we're going to break out of the 62 installer at this point and follow the instructions that are set out in the um, the install doc. Okay, so for the steps now, we're, we're going to need to go back and navigate to the 6.3 uh, folder and into the uh, Opalis integration server. And you see we have three files here. We have the management service pack, the foundation object, and the client patch. So if I'm following the... Um, the directions uh, directly out of the release notes. We're going to uh, begin with the management server installation folder. So I'm going to browse out there, and that will be uh, C colon program files x86 Opalis software Opalis integration server management service, and then components and objects. And in here we have the Opalis integration server underscore foundation objects. MSI. And what we want to do then is basically just copy this version 
into its place. So I'm going to move and replace the old one, and that's our new version. So that looks fine. The, the next step will be to run the Opalis Integration Server Management Service uh, 6.3 patch, which is here. Um, so here there's no, uh, there's no information to complete, uh, just let that run. Uh, don't change any of the prompts. Um, it shouldn't be required. Um, and at that point, the, um, the management service has been patched to, uh, to run appropriately for uh, to Windows Server 2008 uh, with 6.3. So at this point, we can uh, sort of continue back with our normal installation and go to Programs, Opal Software, Deployment Manager. And I see that I've connected to my management service, which is good. And uh, it looks like it's working fine. And at this point, I will go ahead and follow just the, a normal installation process. So I'm going to deploy a new action server. And uh, in this case, it will be my, uh, my local host. And once again, I will supply with the administrator credentials for my domain. And um, go ahead and install that. All right, I'm going to quickly run out to services and just make sure that that's out there and uh, running properly. This is not a mandatory step, but just a little FYI for you. So. I should have a number of Opalis services at this point. And there's the Opalis Action Service, which is what we just installed running as the credentials I've supplied. So that's all good. And we can see the, uh, the management service is also running the watchdog and so forth. So uh, we should be pleased with those results. So the next thing we're going to do now is install the client. So we're going to deploy a new client by right-clicking on the, uh, the Clients tab there. Click Next. And uh, this, again, will be the local host. Uh, you need to click the Add button to move this down into that field. Uh, and you see there it resolved the name for me, quite kindly of it. And uh, just go ahead and let that run. We'll do the same process. Um, we're going to stop at the at this process and then patch the client patch, uh, which is the uh, the one remaining patch we have out there. And at that point, we will have a, a current 6.3 installation that we can uh, use and run. I'm not going to install any integration packs, but uh, the, the process would be to um, use the integration pack uh, branch there, right-click on that, and then uh, both uh, register the integration pack with the management service, and then, of course, to deploy it. So it looks like this point we've got everything seems like it's deployed fine, which is good. I'm going to go ahead then and run the patch. And again, nothing to, uh, nothing to do there except run the patch and just make sure it is patched. And at that point, I'm going to close out of these things close out of the deployment manager as well. Go to Opal software and then run the uh, integration server client. And at this point, uh, if you follow these instructions, this is what you should see. Um, so we've got an Opal integration server here running. Uh, we've got our foundation objects and this is all a clean installation. So there's no policies, no folder structures out here. Um, we should be able to create uh, new folders and uh, new policies and we're able to do that. It's fine, and we can drag objects out into the workflow and, of course, configure them and start to build things as we normally would. So that's all fine. And just a quick look at help about. Um, so because of the, the nature in which we patch this, um, you'll see that the uh, client version is still 6.2.2, uh, but if you come through and uh, look at the individual libraries, uh, we should see under the file monitor and a few others the appropriate extensions. So. Otherwise, we have a complete installation here, and uh, we're done. So thanks for your attention, and uh, good luck using the product.